Hi everyone, welcome back to my class and today I'm going to pose my second video for our subject fundamentals of accounting, business, and management too. So this is about our previous activity under deferrals. Let's have a recap. There are two kinds of deferrals and those are prepayment and pre-collections. Under prepayment, we have two methods of creating and adjusting entries. First one is expense method, which you will use if you want to record the unexpired portion of your payment. Well, the second one is the asset method, which you're going to use if you want to record the expired portion of your payment. For the first transaction, we have on May 31st, Miss D paid 93,600 pesos for one year rent for her apartment. Give the adjusting journal entry on December 31. So first step, we have to highlight the important given and those are the following. May 31, as start of the contract, 93,600 pesos, good for one year or 12 months. And third, December 31, as cut of date. For the asset method, of course, we will get the expired portion of the payment. And to know the expired portion, we have to compute first magkano ba ang binabayad ni Ms. D para sa kanyang renta sa apartment 1-1. To know it, we have to divide the total payment of 93,600 pesos to 12 months kasi nga 1 year valid yung payment niya. And we will get 7,800 pesos. Now, to know the expired portion, uh, the question is, gaano na ba katagal yung service na nare-render kay Ms. D from the start up to the cut-off date? So, from May 31 to December 31, gaano na siya katagal? Let's count! So, yung May, hindi na natin siya isasama kasi 31 na nag-start ng May. So, hindi na makukuha yon as one month. So, we have June, July, August, September, October, November, December. So, we have seven months and we call it expired portion or nagamit na na portion. Therefore, yung five months na natitira, ang tawag sa kanya ay unexpired portion or yung hindi pa nagagamit as of the cut-off date. So, we will consider seven months dahil yun yung expired portion at ang ginagamit natin na method ay asset method. So, we multiply it by 7,800 and we get 54,600. Take note of that amount, yung 54,600, dahil yan yung gagamitin natin sa adjusting entry. Of course, we have pro forma na kailangan nating sundin lagi para hindi mamali yung sagot natin. For asset method, we have debit, expense account, credit, prepaid expense. Siyempre, si cut-off period or cut-off date is December 31, Debit. So, paano natin malalaman kung ano yung expense account niya? Let's go back to the transaction. Ano ba ang binayaran ni Ms. D? Sabi ng transaction, she paid for one year rent. Renta yung binayaran niya. So, renta yung expense. Therefore, let's name it as debit rent expense 54,600. Yung nakompute natin a while ago. And for credit, it says na ang ilagay daw natin ay prepaid expense. So, anong prepaid expense ba siya? So, if that's related to rent, therefore, this is prepaid rent. Same amount, 54,600. And that's our adjusting entry for the asset method under prepayment ng transaction na given. Now, let's have the expense method. For the expense method, ang kukuha ni naman natin is yung unexpired portion or yung hindi pa nagagamit as of the cut-off period. So, let's go back to the computation. We have 7,800 per month. 7 months expired portion. 5 months unexpired. Dahil naka-expense method tayo, kukuhanin natin si unexpired portion. We will consider the 5 months multiplied by 7,800. So, we will get 39,000 pesos. And yung 39,000 pesos na yun, siya yung gagamitin natin na amount to create an adjusting entry. Of course, meron din siyang pro forma. And that's debit, prepaid expense, credit expense account. For the cut-off date, same lang, December 31, debit, prepaid rent, 
39,000, credit rent expense 39,000. So kung mapapansin nyo, pinagbaligtad lang naman yung answer natin kanina kay asset method dito kay expense method. Pero yung amount niya magkaiba kasi yung hindi pa nagagamit na amount mula doon sa payment ay 39,000 pesos. That's why yun yung nirecord natin. And to compare, we have for the asset method, we have debit, rent expense, credit, prepaid rent, both amounted to 54,600. And for expense method, we have debit, prepaid rent, and credit rent expense of 39,000 pesos. So, kapag pinag-add natin si 54,600 at 39,000 pesos, we will get the total of the payment which is 93,600. So, kung ganito yung ginawa nyo, kung katulad nung nakikita nyo mismo sa screen, mas madaling sagutan yung quiz. Kasi, titingnan nyo na lang. So, under asset method, ano ba yung dinebit? So, i-compare nyo na lang siya. For the second transaction, we have last February 1st, Miss T paid 7920 for a 3-year monthly subscription of a business magazine. Give the adjusting journal entry on July 30. This time, ang in naman ni Miss D ay subscription sa isang business magazine na valid for 3 years. If we will apply the asset method, we will get the expired portion of the payment. But the first question is, Magkano ba yung binabayad ni Miss D buwan-buwan para sa subscription niya ng business magazine? And we will get that by dividing the entire payment of 7,920 into 36 months. Bakit po siya 36 months? Dahil valid ang payment for 3 years and that's equivalent to 36 months. And we will get 220 pesos which means uh, every month, Nagbabayad si Miss D ng 220 pesos para makapag-subscribe sa business magazine. Now, if we will get the expired portion of the payment, kailangan malaman muna natin gaano katagal na ba or ilang buwan na ba ang nai-incur ni Miss D from the start up to the cut-off date. So, ilang buwan ba from February 1 hanggang July 30? So, we have February March, April, May, June, July. So we have 6 months and we will consider that as expired portion. And then the remaining 30 months is the unexpired portion. Since we are using the asset method and we have to get the expired portion, so we will consider the 6 months multiplied to 220 pesos and we will get 1320. Take note of that amount dahil gagamitin natin yan sa paggawa ng adjusting journal entry later on. For the pro forma of asset method, we have debit expense account, credit prepaid expense. So, for the cut-off date, we have July 30. Para sa debit natin, ano ba yung binayaran ni Miss D? Sabi sa transaction, it's about subscription. So, our debit is expense account and it has a name of debit subscription expense 1,320 pesos, yung na-compute natin a while ago. And for the credit, we have prepaid expense. And that is prepaid subscription, 1,320. So, that's our adjusting entry for this transaction under asset method. For expense method, of course, we will get the unexpired portion. Or yung hindi pa nagagamit na portion as of the cut-off date, Dated July 30. So, let's go back to the computation. We have 220 pesos per month, 6 months expired portion, and 30 months unexpired portion. Since naka-expense method tayo ngayon, ang kukuhanin natin ay si unexpired portion. So, let's consider the 30 months. Multiplied to 220 pesos, now we have 6,600 6, pesos. And take note of that amount dahil gagamitin natin yan mamaya sa paggawa ng adjusting entry. Pro forma for expense method, debit, prepaid expense, credit expense account. So pinagbaligtad lang yung account kanina compared to asset method. Same cut off date, July 30, and we have debit, prepaid subscription of 6,600, credit, subscription expense of 6,600. 
So, bakit po siya 6,600? Dahil yun ang hindi pa nagagamit na portion as of the cut-off date. To compare, for asset method, we have debit subscription expense and credit prepaid subscription of 1,320. For the expense method, we have debit prepaid subscription, credit subscription expense of 6,600. If we will add up 1,320 and 6,600, we will get the total payment of Ms. D for the subscription of a business magazine amounted to 7,920 pesos. Now, so let's proceed to the third and fourth transaction. And those two are under pre-collections or the involvement of unearned income in doing an adjusting entry. So we have two methods to do an adjusting entry for pre-collection. First one is liability method, which you're going to use to record the income earned or yung uh, uh, nakareceive ka na ng payment at nai-render mo na din yung service or naibigay mo na yung product na binili sa'yo ng customer or client mo. For income method, to record the income not yet earned. Ibig sabihin, ito pa yung uh, halaga ng service or product na hindi mo pa naibibigay sa customer. For third transaction, we have, on June 1, Mr. Gosh received 90,000 pesos for one-year insurance premium. Give the journal entry on December 31. So those are the important given. June 1, yung start ng transaction or contract, 90,000 pesos yung halaga ng one-year insurance, good for 12 months. And December 31 is the cut-off date. Now, if we will apply the liability method, we will get the amount of income earned. Or magkano na ba yung na render na service or, or part ng insurance na nakukuha or nakuha na ni Mr. Gosh as of the cut-off period na December 31. First question, magkano ang binabayaran na insurance premium ni Mr. Gosh? 1-1. So, we will get that by dividing the 90,000 pesos into 12 months. And we will get 7,500, which means 7,500 yung premium na binabayaran ni Mr. Gosh, 1-1, para sa insurance niya. Now, from the start of the transaction or contract, which is June 1 hanggang December 31, which is yung cut-off, Gaano katagal, ilang months na yung na-claim or nagamit ni Mr. Gosh? So, from June 1, July, August, September, October, November, December, we have 7 months. So, yung 7 months na yun, let's call that as earned portion. Dahil na-render na ni Mr. Gosh yung 7 months na yun doon sa client niya. If that 7 month is the earned portion, therefore, the remaining 5 months is the unearned portion. Since we are using the liability method, we have to get the income earned. So, we will consider the 7 months. Multiply by 7,500, we have 52,500 pesos. So, take note of that amount dahil gagamitin natin yan sa paggawa ng adjusting entry. For the pro forma under liability method, we have debit, unearned income, credit, income account. So, the cut-off period or cut-off date is December 31. Debit, anong unearned income kaya ito? So, ano ba yung service na ni-render ni Mr. Gosh? ba insurance? Therefore, yung pangalan ng income na makukuha niya ay syempre insurance revenue or insurance income. And for the debit, let's have unearned insurance revenue of 52,500 pesos. And credit, insurance revenue, 52,500 pesos. Ma'am, bakit po hindi income yung term na ginamit, kundi revenue? Parehas lang po kasi siya. So, kung ano yung gusto nyo gamitin, okay lang din. For the income method, application of income method for this particular transaction, we will get the income not yet earned or yung hindi pa na render na halaga ng service or insurance sa client ni Mr. Gosh. For the computation, we have 7,500 per month and 7 months earned portion, 5 months unearned portion. This time, ang gagamitin naman natin ay si 5 months dahil unearned portion yung hinahanap. 
multiplied by 7,500, we will get 37,500. For the pro forma, we have debit income account, credit, and earned income. Cut-off date is still the same, December 31. For debit, we have insurance revenue of 37,500 and credit and earned insurance revenue of 37,500. So, for comparison, under liability method, we have debit and earned insurance revenue and credit insurance revenue of 52,500. Which means yung amount na yun, yun yung income na na-earned na ni Mr. Gosh dahil na-render na niya yung service worth 52,500 pesos as of the cut-off date. And for the income method, we have debit insurance revenue, credit and earned insurance revenue worth 37,500 which means yan pa yung amount ng insurance na hindi pa naibibigay ni Mr. Gosh. Kasi nga, hindi pa nagdadaan yung time na yun. For the fourth transaction, last one, we have on October 15, Mr. Gosh received 6 months rental fee in advance worth 66,000 pesos. Give the adjusting journal entry on December 15. So, ang business naman ngayon ni Mr. Gosh ay rentals. Wherein yung client niya binigyan siya ng 66,000 pesos na advance payment and that's valid for 6 months. Now, if we will apply the liability method, we will record the income earned or Kung magkano na yung amount ng rental fee na nai-render ni Mr. Gosh as of the cut-off period na December 15. Now, let's find out magkano ba per month ang nare-receive ni Mr. Gosh dahil sa rental na yun. So, if the payment is 66,000 pesos, we will divide that into 6 months and we will get 11,000 pesos. Yun yung nare-receive na payment ni Mr. Gosh mula sa client niya. And, ilang buwan na ba ang nai-render na rental ni Mr. Gosh doon sa client? So, kung nag-start ng October 15 at ang cut-off period ay December 15, ilang months na yon? So, we have November 15, December 15. So, 2 months. 2 months earned portion, therefore, the 4 months remaining is the unearned portion. Since we are using liability method, we will consider the 2 months unearned portion. Multiplied by 11,000, we will get 22,000 pesos. And that amount is what we're going to apply or record in creating the adjusting entry for this transaction. For the pro forma, we have debit and earned income, credit income account. So, the cut-off date is December 15. Debit, anong unearned income kaya ito? Since this is related to rental fee, we will name that unearned income as unearned rent income worth 22,000 pesos and credit rent income 22,000 pesos. So that's the part of earned income ni Mr. Gosh or yan na yung na-render na service ni Mr. Gosh doon sa client niya as of the cut of period na December 15. Now, to apply the income method, we will consider the income not yet earned or magkano pa yung natitirang part ng rental fee na hindi pa na -re render doon sa client ni Mr. Gosh. So, let's go back to the computation. We have 11,000 pesos as monthly payment na nare-receive ni Mr. Gosh and 2 months earned portion, 4 months unearned portion. Since naka-income method tayo, we will consider the unearned portion which is 4 months. Multiplied by 11,000, we will get 44,000 pesos. And yeah, that amount is what we're going to use in creating the adjusting entry for this one. For the date, we have December 15, debit rent income 44,000 and credit unearned rent income 44,000. To compare, under liability method, we have debit unearned rent income Credit rent income worth 22,000 pesos. And for the income method, we have debit rent income, credit unearned rent income worth 44,000 pesos. So, if we will add up 22,000 pesos and 44,000 pesos, we will get the total payment of Mr. Gosh client amounted to 66,000 pesos. So, that's all. And we're done. Thank you for listening. Um, let's wait for the another video that I will be posted next week. And have a nice day, everyone.